we had a um, training that 50 people uh, went to about accountability and accountability planning and uh, related to KPIs and how important it was that we all get focused on our KPIs. And uh, the way this started was uh, there was a group of us that go, every year it changes who goes, we went to a meeting, um, a sequin meeting, Continuous Quality Improvement Network meeting. And we went uh, last summer. And when we heard uh, Craig Hickman speak, we just really thought that it would be exceptionally important for us to bring this back to the college because we could see where uh, that would be extremely important for us to be able to adopt. And so as we've done in the past, we start out with a group of people and then we expand it and expand it until everybody is able to be a part of the training. And the, the uh, first ones of us then are expected to learn this and model it for everybody else. And so if I come up to you and say I need constructive feedback from you, don't look at me very weird just because you know that it's a weird thing for me to ask you to begin with, but just say, okay, um, I would like to tell you about this meeting that we just had, and this is what went really well, and this is what could have gone better. Or this is an issue that we've had, and you handled that well, or, you know, Laura, you could have done this just a little bit different. And so, but do it in a, as a positive way as you can. The thing that we expect is going to happen is that there are going to be some of us who, myself included, who once in a while will give feedback that won't be in the most positive way. And so when we do that, please just say, hey, you know, that wasn't a very constructive way to talk to me. Could we please do that over again? And then hopefully the person can repeat back to you in a little bit nicer way. But it's a training thing, and it's about us being accountable for everything that's going on at the college. And so, you know, everything that's going on with the college, people feel overwhelmed. We've got so many projects that are going on. How can we have this many projects going on? They're all, every single solitary one of them should be, and as far as I know are, directly related to our strategic agenda. Currently, our strategic agenda is available online. Not on my bay, but online. Okay, so if you go to the main web page, you can put in strategic agenda and you will come up with that document. And along with that, you will be able to link on the objectives to the projects that we've been doing over the last year that are completed that had to do with those objectives, and it will also list the projects that are ongoing that relate to those objectives, okay? And so as the PAC makes decisions about what it is that we're going to do, how we're going to allocate resources, we do it always based on data. Now, the fun thing this week for Matt Barron <laughs> is that we're working on, we've been working on the budget. And, um, and so I've been doing a pretty good job of not going in and bugging Matt for the last six months. Have you been doing this for six months now? And I haven't been, I've been doing a pretty good job of not bugging him, but uh, the last few days have not been that way because I really do use data to make decisions, and so he's been being asked to do a lot of data stuff for me for this last week. So anyway, you will find in the strategic agenda the priorities, the objectives, the next steps, and the key performance indicators. Our priorities remain the same. They are student success, community success, and the culture of success. This is what our byline is. It is what we believe. It's what we have believed and put in place over the last three or four years since we've developed the strategic agenda initially. And every single year, the PAC looks at the strategic agenda and makes changes uh, if needed once a year. We also look at it other times during the year, but we look at it specifically to see are there things that we need to change at least once a year. And so after this meeting that we had, we did that. But these always remain the same. Our objectives, and there are five of them, advance the quality of academics, optimize the transition into, through, and beyond college, connect with external stakeholders, enhance resource capacity, and secure employee engagement are all connected to our priorities. Okay. Every single solitary one of them lead directly to a priority. The thing that people are most concerned about is their evaluations. They don't understand their evaluations. They don't understand how they're being evaluated. They don't understand how that evaluation has anything to do with their job. And so we have a new group, the Employee Culture and Communication Team. And that team is going to work on 
evaluation. And that team is going to work really hard to have that new evaluation system in place so that when we do our evaluations the 1st of December, we're able to use a new system. That's going to be a goal. He just found that out. Aren't you thrilled? The other piece is improve the employee onboarding. Because another piece that people have uh, concerns about is, what am I supposed to be doing? My boss doesn't understand what I'm doing. You know, the, the understanding of what their job is, what their responsibilities are, and how they fit in with the rest of the, the college. And part of that should be being done when you're first starting. We should be explaining that to you very, very well. And so some changes have been made in people's job descriptions. Because jobs do evolve and change over time. And so this is part of our process now in that evaluations have to be done by the 30th of January and the job descriptions need to be reviewed to make sure that what you're doing actually matches with the evaluation. But we're going to be working very hard on the onboarding process because it's something that people um, have not been happy with. So uh, we removed, we used to have two KPIs under each objective. We removed those and we now have um, these right here, we have five. And they each have measurable outcomes uh, for each overarching priority. So I've been talking for the last few years about completion. Completion, completion, completion. How many times have you heard me talk about that and how we need to raise it? And um, that the goal of the federal government and of the state government is that by 2025, 60% of adults 25 and over will have a certificate or a degree that they have received after high school. That's the goal. And that goal is there. Why? Because our country needs people with skills. And this, no job can be done today without skills, hardly. And so we need to do that. And so our focus is on completion and graduation. And a completion, I'll get to that in just a minute, but a completion rate is graduation plus transfer equals completion. We have two different ways that we can look at this. One is a six-year completion rate. And this is done by the VFA, which is the Voluntary Framework of Accountability. This was developed by AACC, and it was done by uh, community college uh, employees across the country. Our own Mark Kinney, when he was an institutional researcher, participated on that national endeavor. And um, the definition of that's going to be here in just a minute. But this is for six-year completion rate. This is a much more comprehensive way of looking at our uh, completions than what the original one is that we all complain about all the time, which is the three-year completion rates of iPads. And those focus only on first-time, full-time students. I am a terrible failure at six institutions before I got my bachelor's degree. I would count as a failure in six institutions, which is silly, when in fact, if you looked at the VFA, I would have been a success. Um, culture of success, we're focused on the employee satisfaction survey. And our goal there is to improve it by 10%. So in the fall of 2012, employee satisfaction survey, we scored a 3.8. We want that to be a 4.3. Okay, That would be the highest we've ever had. So I'll show you that, that schema in just a few minutes. Um, and then the community success is the tougher one. How do we have a measurement that measures community success? And so we're, we're hoping to uh, be able to vet some of that out from you all. Anyone who has an idea on this, please tell us, because we would really like to hear it. But in the interim, we've put two actions up here. These are actions. These are not uh, true KPIs, key performance indicators, but these are actions that need to be done and that we are focused on this year. The first one is in Escanaba. And in November, we have a millage election. This is a critical thing for this college. Uh, this is a renewal. No one's going to get increases in taxes. And uh, we need to pass it. And so that is our uh, KPI for the Escanaba campus. 
for Bay West, we had the launch of the Michigan's New Jobs Training Program. This is a uh, project that Mark Kinney is leading and Pat Patrick Kennedy is working with. Um, it's a way of, it's the way the state is trying to keep businesses in this state instead of them moving out when they need to grow. Because this was a problem there for a little while. And so what happens is if a company is going to be increasing the number of employees, so if company A has had 100 employees for the last year, and they're going to increase that to 120, and these are new jobs with new peeps, then those 20 employees need to be making $12.95 an hour. Is that right? Thank you. And um, their state income taxes will go to the Department of Treasury, who will send it back to us where, so that we can use that money to train people. So this makes it so that the employers can hire new people, they can get trained, and it doesn't, it, it doesn't cost them money, but it keeps them here. It keeps their tax base here. And so uh, when that um, program is over, then those people are still here, they're still paying taxes, and it's an improvement for the state. Instead of giving tax credits, which is what pr prior administrations have done, this is a positive way of getting, uh, keeping people here. So here is our uh, Bay College scorecard. Um, what you have here is the VFA, six-year graduation transfer rate, the IPEDS, Miller Support, employee engagement level, and then what it is we want to do. So you've got the current data. You have what our goal is. You have a benchmark, and this benchmark is from the National Community College Benchmarking Project out of uh, Johnson County Community College. Did I get that right, too? I think so. Um, and that's what it is. That's the national benchmark. So we want to be better than that always. So then you have our stretch goals, our acceptable range, requires monitors, and then action requires. So it's the, the old red, yellow, green, blue thing that you've got, you know, we have going, red, yellow, green, I guess the blue is when you are up in the sky and you're stretching or something. So, um, so we have cohort data here for the VFA. It's for our 2004 cohort. Okay, so the 2004 cohort, why are we going back so far? Because this is a six-year measurement. So people who came in in 2004, they would have, you know, that would have been the 2005 school year. So the information we have is for 2011 graduation rates. And so very soon, here in the next month or two, I think, uh, we're going to be getting the most up-to-date, which will be with the 2012 graduating class, right? Last year's class. So we're waiting right now to receive that. Now for um, IPEDS, it's a three-year graduation rate. And so this comes from the cohort that started here in 2009. Here's our IPEDS data. And um, this is how we've been doing. And we're going down. And that's not very nice. So as you all are building your accountability plans, as you all are building department goals, as you're building your individual goals, we need people to persist and to stay here and get degrees and certificates. Everybody here can own that. Everybody. When I'm in the cafeteria at lunchtime, I walk around and I ask students how they're doing. Are they enjoying the semester? God, Laura, I'm taking the hardest class. It's so hard. Are you studying hard? Yeah, are you getting? Well, I'm doing OK. Have you registered yet? What can we do to help you get registered? Who do you need to see? We want you here. We want you to complete. I'm having a lousy day today. I'm going to drop out. Well, why would you do that? Well, my kids. Well, why did you come? Well, I want to set a good example for my kids. OK, so you got a tough spot here. But you know what? What can we do to help? See it, own it, solve it, do it. These are the things that we really, really need to do. We need to see this change. This really, really, really needs to change. And everything we do here impacts this. Every single solitary thing. You've got work-study students, have conversations with them. 
run into a kid in the lab, talk to him. Kid or adults. I mean, the adults have got even more issues. So, you know, we, we really, we have got to really and truly own this. We need to get this flipped around. We're providing a fantastic quality education here for every single person that comes in the door. We have services to help people get through. We need them to use them, and we need them to stay here, and we need them to graduate. And if they have to go to a four-year institution before they graduate, they need to do a reverse transfer and get a degree from us. Interestingly, I was talking to someone, and they have a family member, niece or nephew or somebody, who went down to Grand Valley, and in their uh, transfer orientation, they said, we will send your classes back to Bay College so that you can get your degree. That's what Grand Valley said to our student. We need to be talking it on this end also. Because there are times when students really do, it's going to be the most benefit, it's a very small number of times, but there are times when it's going to be beneficial for our students to go ahead and go on to the four-year institution. But we need them to persist. We need to retain them in a semester. We need to get them to persist to the next semester. And we need for them to come the following fall, and we need to, to graduate. Now, one of the things that I've been asked by people who are developing the accountability plan is, well, how, how do I fit with this? How do I, how do I fit with this KPI of, of increased degree completion? It's just as I was saying. You're walking down the hall, and you see a student. How's it going? Have you registered yet? That simple thing can get somebody to get in there and, and to do that. Um, again, there's our uh, uh, three-year IPES data. Here's our persistence data. And you know it wiggles around. And um, it stays in the 70s range. Our goal is eventually we want to get up to over 80%. And I was talking to um, Claire Kickman, who was telling me about a, a school in Maricopa School in Arizona. And they had a goal of raising their persistence rate by 2%. And in one year, they raised it 20% because everybody started talking to students about persistence. Um, the bottom line is fall to winter, fall to fall, and this is fall to winter. This needs to be 80%. Okay? This needs to be 60%. We're not going to do those necessarily in one year, but that's the overall long term what we need to do. So, what is it that we are trying to do? With the VFA, we're trying to raise that by 2%. With the uh, iPads, we're trying to trying to do it by 2% also. And what does that actually mean? That means 17 more full and part-time students need to graduate in 2014 from this college than what we graduated last year. And then after that, we're going to increase it by 2%. And we're going to increase it by 2%. Because the net result is 12 years from now. We need the bottom one to be 120 more students. And the top one to be 30, 70 and 34, 204 more students. That's what we need to do to reach the goals that we need to reach. Because we need more educated people in Delta County. Our employers need more educated people in Delta County. With more educated people come more jobs and more companies. What we know for sure is the bachelor's degrees, I want to say there's about 17% of our population has a bachelor's degree. And about, I don't know this factually, but I, I'm guessing. I, I've seen it once and I just don't remember exactly, but it's either 33 or 35% have associate's degrees. We need that to be 60%. So there's all those people, 25 and above, who don't have degrees. And the sad thing, across the country is that uh, the kids from, kids, see I'm 
over 60, and so anything below that as a kid. Uh, the 25 to 45 year olds have less education than the uh, adults 55 and above. Uh, and so they, and, and, and this, yeah, and so we're getting, becoming a less educated population. So there's lots of people out there who need to be coming. And, um, and we need to be providing them with the education that they want and that they need. Uh, the community success, we really are going to need each and every one of you to get registered to vote. And we need you to vote. Register to vote and vote. And get all of your neighbors, all of your family, everybody you know who's going to vote in the proper way, we need them to be at the polls on November the 5th. Start thinking about it. Start thinking about who you can contact. Start thinking about what you can do. We're going to have buttons and yard signs and we're sending out two career focuses this year. We've already had our birthday bash. We're going to have a gala. What's it called? It's a golden gala. We're going to have a golden gala where we're going to be able to see a play and eat dinner, uh, sell tickets for lots of money so that everybody will want to come and donate money to the college. Uh, this is going to be right before November the 1st. Um, there's going to be lots of opportunities. So we are going to need everybody Everybody's going to need to be involved in this because we really cannot afford to not have this millage passed. This millage is used for all of our reconstruction. It pays for uh, a portion of our capital uh, re maintenance and replacement. Um, it, it's a very, very important. And it's money that will come right straight out of our general fund if we don't pass this millage. So we really, 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 really need this to pass. And again, no increases, we're not going for a Headley override, none of that. What we are doing is we are going strictly for a one mill that's a one mill right now, so nobody's going to change how much they have to pay. Um, other things, that, and then the, the launching of the Michigan New Jobs Training Program over in Dickinson, which I already talked about. Other things that we will measure as we're going through this is expanded and improved trainings um, out of MTech, non-credit contact hours our K through 12 con uh, contacts that we have and, and partnerships that we are developing, uh, seminars and conference attendance. We haven't come up with this big overriding good way to measure community success. So anyone who's got an idea, please contact your PAC member or me and please just get that word to us because we really are looking for something that will really work well and there's some of you in this audience that are great uh, wordsmiths. And then the culture of success uh, measured by employee satisfaction. Uh, this is something that I have really been very um, committed to since I've been here. Uh, we've been running the employee satisfaction surveys. I've been meeting with you guys twice a year. Uh, and, and so putting it up there as a number one priority for the institution so that the institution is absolutely focused on this is uh, the thing that we feel is most important to do. Uh, we have gone everywhere from 3.9 to 3.8 uh, in our 2012. Uh, we are sending out the survey. In fact, it's already been sent out by Penny uh, for this year. We went back to doing it in the spring instead of in the fall. Uh, reason for that was uh, when we decided to send it out in the fall, we failed to ask Penny how that would impact her life. And uh, it was right in the middle of when she was doing iPads or something. And so uh, it really wasn't a very good idea to move it to the fall. So uh, we've moved it back to the spring because it works better into her schedule. And then that gives her, and she and Matt, time over the summer to gather the data and do an analysis on it so that we can talk about it in the uh, spring. So this goal of raising it to, uh, by 10% is uh, specific to the 2014 uh, Employee Satisfaction Survey, although I really hope to see it go up this year just a little bit. So. Um, and again, we're going at this through improving the evaluation system and improving the onboarding system. Um, the other piece that we are doing is uh, the extensive uh, professional development. We've been really working hard on professional development over the last seven years. And uh, the work that we're doing with uh, Craig Hickman and the partners in leadership is something that should impact every single solitary person here at the college and will really be instrumental in changing the culture at Bay to one of um, more cooperation, better communication, and uh, really good uh, feedback 
that leads us to accomplishing the goals that we want to accomplish so that we're all going in one direction instead of going in. We will be giving updates on the progress of the measures uh, over the year. Uh, we're going to be, we'll do one in, in uh, July that reflects the graduation rates this year. Uh, and then we will do another one in uh, November that will show the uh, persistence to the fall. And then we will do another one in March that shows the persistence from fall to winter. And, um, and then also uh, updates on the um, graduation rates as well during those times. So we're going to be giving you uh, constant feedback on these things because we want you to be aware of them. We want you to be able to connect to them. Again, you will be having meetings with your PAC members uh, developing department goals. And then you as individuals should be developing personal goals that feed to these KPIs because all of us need to be working on the same things. So um, how do these efforts link? Uh, as I said, we have the employee culture and communication team. And in those discussions that we had, um, when did we do that? We did that in the fall. And those groups that were working on that, they identified the evaluation and onboarding system as direct issue. And this directly links to KPI number five, employee engagement. The other AQIP project, uh, student engagement and empowerment initiative, where they continue to look at persistence and retention, which links to KPI number one and two, as well as the completion rates. So the projects that we do, whether they be AQIP or anything else, all lead to one place all lead to one place. And every single department at this college is linked to our strategic agenda. Whether you're in the business department, whether you're in institutional advancement, whether you're in IT, student services is an obvious one, faculty is an obvious one, Everybody, everybody is linked to these students. And the kind of experience they have with your department, institutional advancement is another obvious one because they're out there marketing like crazy. Uh, every department impacts our students. Uh, and so you just really, really need to keep that in mind 